Dude, I'm going to go back to therapy. Hey, I'm back in therapy. I'm going to go back. I got some, uh, I got, I got to work out. I got to get it out of me. So it's not affecting people around me. Oh, unlike me, who's affecting everyone right now. I am. Oh no, I, I am affecting people, which is why I have to like, I, I gotta, I gotta fix some. Shit. My, my therapist gave me good advice. I misunderstood it, told it to my wife. She then recorrected the advice. I then understood it, and it's been working great. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? He, he said, he goes, you need to, what he was saying was you need to separate yourself. You're, you're, what's happening is you're getting upset, and the, 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 your reaction is, is toxic. The way you're reacting to it is unhealthy, and it's not good for other people. You need to separate yourself. I never see that side of you. Oh. You're, like, you're like one of the most fun guys. I was saying on Rogan, you're so much fun. Like, I, I, I feel like you get you, you pay attention to make sure everybody's having fun. I feel like oh. you're that guy. And if you see somebody, you like, like, uh, I'm mean, as a bad example. Remember Belushi in Animal House when that dude was yeah. crying because they wrecked his car and he took the bottle and he, <laughs> he smashed the bottle on his head. I feel like you got that that thing where like uh, yeah it's a I don't know but my, it's my, different hanging out versus living with somebody is completely well, different. My stuff oddly enough is 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 kind of about that shit is a it's stuff going on in my family where I feel like people are not I want everyone to hang out in the living room and and be a team and I want I don't want anyone to grow up. I don't want anyone to grow up. I want us to be the same oh, little boy. group that we've always been. And people are growing up and people are making decisions without consulting me. And, and, I, and I get really upset. But regardless, the therapist told me I need to separate my, from those situations because I'm taking it personally and I'm being toxic. Just separate. I misunderpreted it and I was like, uh, my therapist thinks uh, I need to take a vacation from this family. And my wife's like, what? And I was like, you guys are toxic. You're killing me. <laughs> and then she, she was like, Oh, I see what's going on. You're toxic. You need to go to the bedroom right now and just go. And I dealt with it really good. I said, hey, I'm really proud of you. I understand what you did. I get that. And I, we're not done talking about this, but I can't talk about this right now because I love you too much to be a bad person right now. And then everyone was like, well, this is very mature for you. And I went into the bedroom and I went to sleep and I woke up the next day and was in a better mood. And I said, hey, I said, I we're going to talk about this later today. I still haven't talked about it, but, but I don't know. Tell you I what talked. Joe Bartnick says? Joe Bartnick says, women who marry comedians are saints. <laughs> Any woman that marries a comic is a saint. Oh. No, dude, you know what I learned? I was watching, uh, um, I went down some, uh, you know, just on YouTube, right? I've been watching all these French films. And um, I watched the original uh, La Femme Nikito which was great. The French one is great. It gets a little, her training, it got a little hokey. And I'm like, well, you know, they, you know, the French sense of humor is a little, plus the movie's almost 30 years old. But then just the way it goes from there was, was amazing. But I, I, I in that column was somehow it was somebody analyzing Joe Rogan's show, which I love when people come up with these videos and they analyze a friend of mine, because that most times it's not right. But whether they were, whether their analyzation of him was correct or not, I actually got something out of it where it was like, Joe was talking to somebody and they kept interrupting and they were going, look how Joe breathes here. He breathes, he's breathing from his mouth and da 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 da. I know it's like one of those things where they just created this whole backstory and it was probably, whatever but i was it and it was they used his show to talk about breathing to maintain your not losing your shit so i I'm, now that i've said this out loud they probably just attached it to the joe rogan show because it's so fucking huge and they wanted to get hits yeah but my wife said something and i went that and i started raising my elevating my voice and i just brought it down and i just put my head back and started breathing slowly as she was going like well what Blah, 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 thinking that I was getting ready to blow up. And I actually went the other way. <laughs> like she thought it was like this nuclear thing, you know, I was going to go nuclear yeah. and I brought it all the way down. 
And I went, all right, it's fine. We can just do something else. And then she was looking at me like, like that was it. And I was like, did you see what I just did there? Because of course, I'm the comedian. I need the pat on the back. I got to get the laugh or the, or the <laughs> acknowledgement. <laughs> I was like, I just started breathing. So I did that today with um, a couple of issues that came up. And I just sort of breathed my way through it. It worked out. Things fucking bother me. That sh- like, they shouldn't. Well, you know, there was people on my street. They took out these two giant. They were redoing the sidewalk, and they took out these two giant old trees. And it's like, can you do that? Oh, that would drive me fucking nuts. You're not allowed to do yeah, that. Yeah, and it's just like, so what? So what? Somebody can rollerblade down the fucking street? Like, when did the trees win, Bart? Huh? That's what I started thinking. Like, why do why are we always the fucking priority? And they were these great trees, and it's this awesome tree lined street. And now, like, there's this giant alopecia tree hole in the middle of the fucking street. Oh, and but here's the thing, crazy. dude. I can't rat people out. I can't rat people out. First of all, I don't know why they took it out. They could have been dead. I don't know. Yeah. They didn't, but as far as my assessment and no knowledge of trees, <laughs> I looked at the stump. <laughs> And then I'm like, oh, you're just going to leave the stump there? Yeah. Um, that's the type of stuff. Uh, oh, okay. Let's talk trees that, then. That's, that, gets, that gets me going. So we, we I, I, I don't think there's any secret, but we bought a new house. And we have been, we've been do, trying to fix it up over the quarantine. But it's been touch and go with restrictions and whatnot. But one of the things we could do was very early plant plant some privacy hedges right so so i was pretty specific about what i wanted this is but by the way this is one of the things i was in therapy for i was very specific about what we wanted i said uh i want ficus ficus grows big and tall and and they're perfect and leanne says their roots are invasive i go not to me i don't really care <laughs> what does invasive do, mean it means if, if they just roots go anywhere i don't give a shit i don't care I see oh, okay. everywhere. They're great, and you can't see through them. They're great privacy hedges. She's like, they got these great cherry blossom privacy hedges. I think we're going to go with those. Their roots aren't invasive. And now I'm thinking, in my head, I go, I bet invasive root means bigger tree. I bet invasive root, it's like saying, like, uh, you know, you know, he's got big hands. Well, then he's got a big dick. I need a big dick in this situation. So I'm like, I, maybe I want the invasive. We buy these fucking goddamn cherry trees and we must have gotten the fucking most rescue cherry trees you could ever see none of them none of them are even at fence height half of them bend over because they grew too heavy so they're just bent over these are the bane of my existence and i'm and the whole time i'm just like i knew what i wanted i said what i wanted and then i got convinced by you and another woman to get something else and i told you i want these and both of them said, no, this is the problem with men. Invasive, you don't want invasive roots. It's going to tear up your fence. I go, hey, I won't need the fence once these, once these trees are fucking, fucking Kareem Abdul-Jabbar high. I, you know, dude, I, yeah, I, I, I feel your pain. There's, there's like, don't you hate as a married guy when the decision's already made and oh. they still come and ask you? That's one of the things where it's just like, I literally now, so many things my wife asked me, I just laugh going like, I, I know you've already made up your mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's, it's, it's a wrap. Like, um, yeah, that's the thing. That's my, you know, I have a lot of issues with this whole narrative, as they say, that, that guys are, are just like the married women are just these kept women and blah, blah, blah. And I just want to be like, where, I mean, like, it, it just seems like the only way to have your woman like that is you got to be like abusive. Yeah. I Like those wife beater guys, like they're <laughs> staring at the ground, afraid to do anything. Like, I mean, if that's the way you want to fuck it, I mean, who'd want to do that to somebody, but like everybody else, if you, if you just, Oh, wait, this is going to sound like a man. If you don't slap the shit out of your wife, you ain't going to have her in line. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, if you try to do what they tell you to do, 
Oh, wow. Can you imagine if this whole fucking thing, this whole woman's move was really just about to eliminate the physical superiority as far as strength, generally speaking, of a man towards the woman and then shift the game to a cerebral thing, their strength. The way Jim Ursay sat on the competition committee and made the Patriots defense illegal and then he stole our offense and won a fucking Super Bowl, right? Like, what if they, if that's the way they were going? I like that because then what happens is all you got to do is learn how to play their games. And then you get better at it than they are. And then they let you in. And now, you, now you're now you reading their playbook. This is like a fucking movie, Bert. <laughs> this is a great idea. I love that every sports guy goes, I actually can understand that analogy. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> they just flip it on us. So all Jim of a sudden. say, help make fucking rules. The guy who calls everybody else a cheat helped make fucking rules that was advantageous for the type, how his team was built. That was that classic one where we fucking shut him down and they bitched about to the refs and they said what they're doing is not illegal. Then they made a tape. Him and Peyton Manning were talking about it. They're like, it's not illegal. And then the next year, it was illegal. And within two years of that, and, and, and Ursay sat on the competition committee. I'm not saying he was the only guy. But he was in there running his yap. And within two years of that, they, they beat us um, with our own offense and shit, which I got to tell you is fine. I don't have a problem with any of that. The problem I have is to then double back and be like, oh, they took some air out of a ball. It's just like, yeah, you fucking change the rules, buddy. Good on you, but quit your fucking crying. Yeah, that, as uh, I bring this up, fucking fifteen years after it happened. 